Hello and welcome to another episode of Scott Reads Comics. Today I'll be featuring a great one. Iron Fist number 12, published in 1977 by Marvel Comics. This one features some fantastic early Burn Claremont collaboration. So let's get right into it. We've got a fantastic cover featuring another Claremont collaborator, Dave Cockrum, excellent cover artist for Marvel at this time. And we see, obviously, the main conflict of the issue, Iron Fist going at it with that old Sentinel of Liberty, Captain America. So this is going to be pretty fantastic. Uh, the shield and the power, all-out action as Iron Fist faces the super might of Captain America. Kung Fu action in the Mighty Marvel Manor. 30 cents, folks, 30 cents in 1977. Great inset ad here for the King Kong movie. Of course, he wasn't this big in the movie, but cool. I remember as a kid collecting the uh, the cards, the uh, the trading cards uh, from Tops, I believe. Pretty fun, fun time. Let's get into it here. Uh, Chris Claremont is our author. John Byrne is the listed as the artist. Dan Adkins is the anchor for this one. Joe Rosen, letterer. Don Warfield, colorist. Archie Goodwin is our editor. Assault on Avengers Mansion is the title. You are Captain America, and you are a living legend. You are also an Avenger, and this day finds you on watch in the Mansion Headquarters monitor room. It's been six hours since the Wrecking Crew attacked uh, that East Side medical complex. And since that time, no one's seen hide nor hair of them, or of that martial artist maverick Iron Fist. So already Cap is suspicious of Iron Fist uh, based on, and we'll see some other uh, erroneous evidence, but we'll get back to that. In a few minutes though, you can ask him yourself. Right now, he's only a few stories above your head. I thought I'd seen sophisticated defenses in my days, but this mansion beats them all. If I hadn't spent years in Kun Lun under Lei Kung's tutelage, learning ninjutsu arts, I wouldn't have had a chance here. As it is, it's taken me all day to get this far. Time's running out for me and Misty Knight. So Iron Fist barges in uh, to Avengers Manson, finally makes his entrance, it runs into, of course, Jarvis, one of the main denizens of Avengers Mansion, and Jarvis gets the wrong idea, runs away, and Iron Fist has to pursue him. Meanwhile, Captain America, um, Further reads up on Iron Fist using the Avengers computer and sees some old headlines uh, about Iron Fist being accused of uh, being a kung fu killer back a few issues ago. Uh, he was eventually cleared, but Cap doesn't read the retraction. It's the headline that he focuses on. So now we definitely have our misunderstanding set up for this, this coming superhero fight. Meanwhile, back up on the third floor, He's gaining on me, but I mustn't fail Captain America, the Avengers. I mustn't. So we have an incredible sequence here where Jarvis actually trips. And this awesome uh, panel here, which breaks up our page. Real, just brilliant design from early John Byrne. Pre-peak of his powers, we might suggest, but still phenomenal here. And nice Dan Atkins inks as um, this figure work shows Iron Fist rescuing Jarvis and bearing the brunt of the impact, although Jarvis apparently faints. And that's when Captain America comes upon Iron Fist, seemingly looming menacingly over an unconscious Jarvis. Jarvis, all right, mister, what's going on here? What, who? Oh, and this full page shot is worth the 30 cent cover price. It's worth <laughs> the $2 price that my friend Jan paid for this issue and then kindly sent to me in the mail uh, from a, a shop in Chicago. But wow, what a, uh, what a page. The name is Captain America and you're Iron Fist, the Kung Fu Killer. Well, Killer, you'd better pray you hadn't added Jarvis to your list of victims because if you have, I'm gonna make you wish you were never been, you'd never been born. So phenomenal opening. Um, Salvo from Cap here on this uh, upcoming superhero fight. And the two begin to really go at it here, and it's pretty incredible. Gods, his shield coming at me from all sides as if it were alive. I can't dodge forever. My best chance is to take the fight to Cap himself. 
I only wish there were some other way. Hi! No, he rolled with my punch. Oh. And you can see, pow, Cap nails him here with a right cross. And the fight continues. But right now we have our fight interspersed with shots of the wrecking crew. And I love the way John Byrne draws the wrecking crew with their like huge, almost inhuman proportions. But why? I've done nothing to him. Why won't he let me explain? The wrecking crew will be here soon. And if we're not ready for them, you're going to bust into Avengers Mansion and kill every hero you find inside. So we get a little bit of flashback here as the fight's going on. A really neat story construction. I'm sure this was done full script. So this is Claremont's idea. Uh, but Byrne and Adkins executed brilliantly. I have to make Cap understand what's going on. Even if I have to beat him senseless to do it. You're very good, youngster. It's not everyone who gets through my guard. But I'm better. Boom! He punches him away. Don't trust the punk, boss. I say, kill him now. But here we have the crux of it all. They're holding Misty Knight hostage, as was suggested earlier. Don't worry, bulldozer. If Ironfish double crosses us, we'll kill his lady friend. And then now back to the fight. I can hear Cap coming, but only just. The man moves as silently as a cat. I've never faced anyone like him. His technique is basic but his speed and power are incredible. And here, Cap catches Iron Fist's backhand, hurls him into this piece of equipment, and now uh, Danny Rand Iron Fist calls upon his titular power. He's coming at me again, pressing me, dizzy, but gotta stop him, make him listen, gotta use Iron Fist against him. But I've already charged up Iron Fist twice today. Strain is almost more than I can bear. The internal monologue of Iron Fist throughout this series uh, through Claremont is, um, <laughs> it's good, but it's also overwrought. And, and it was endemic of, the, of comics at the time. There was a lot of that going on. Doug Mensch was famous for it as well. Iron Fist's hand, it's glowing, crackling with raw energy. Better move in fast before, and Cap gets his shield up in time. Shakow! And to Iron Fist initially thinks he's hurt Cap, but he can see that now, in shockingly, Cap is getting up. That punch is only effective if it hits me, Iron Fist, and I'm not going to let that happen again. His shield slicing through these those machinery supports, that generator's falling. So here, Iron Fist uses a ploy. The crazy, what does Iron Fist think he's doing? If he doesn't move now, he won't stand a chance. Blast it, I just can't stand by and let the fool kill himself. So great action panel here as Cap ends up saving <clears throat> Iron Fist as he's standing waiting for the machinery to fall on him. And that kind of breaks the tension of their fight. That's cutting things a little too close for comfort, Cap. For a moment there, I didn't think you were going to be in time. But now that you've saved my life, will you listen to me? That's all I ask. And when I'm finished, if you're still in the mood, you can punch me out to your heart's content. So here, Iron Fist tells him the whole story uh, about how he was basically blackmailed into attacking Avengers Mansion for them. And they're on the way. And here we have uh, a great shot of them. And this is what I was suggesting earlier. Burns cartooning here is phenomenal. Um, the figure work on the uh, Wrecking Crew, they're, they're just so, they're like elemental forces. The, they're incredibly blocky, uh, but also well rendered. And they're, they're just really cool. I, I wish the Wrecking Crew always looked like this. They're just totally awesome. I think Sal Buscema draws them similarly um, in their battle with the, the Defenders, um, maybe a year or two before this. Uh, so anyway, they're descending on uh, Avengers Mansion, and they arrive via the sewers. Uh, you can rest easy, boys. Iron Fist's giving me the high sign from Avengers Mansion. The coast is clear. So here he's leading them in. Misty thinks he's betrayed um, his heroic ideals. 
Oh, Iron Fist, no, how could you? It was, it was easy, Misty, his life or yours. He's told them he's killed Captain America, basically, and here's Cap, obviously, playing possum. There he is, Wrecker, the living legend of World War II, dead at the hands of the living weapon. Real quick, before we get to our next page of story, Iron Fist Folds, which is our mail column for Iron Fist. And I always like to check these letter pages for famous creators uh, or creators who would later become famous. And we have uh, Mary Jo Duffy here writing in from um, Garden City, New York. She uh, is very uh, appreciative of Iron Fist uh, as a series, especially John Byrne's artwork. John, what can I say except that I fell in love with your style when you were doing ROG 2000 and that carefully controlled undertone of cartooniness is one of the things that, that makes your work here brilliant and innovative. And she goes on and they have a nice reply to her. So not too many years after this is printed, Mary Jo Duffy will be uh, working in comics at Marvel. Pretty cool. Love this subscription ad. Looks like John Romita uh, here on this ad. All right, so they basically lured the Wrecking Crew into what, uh, for the Avengers, is their danger room. And I believe Cap even calls it the danger room at one point, which is, isn't is the X-Men have that copywritten? That's the Spirit Crew. Crowd right in and keep your attention focused on Cap's body. Don't give a thought to where you are. And the door closes and Misty can't get in. So now... How are these two uh, low-powered characters, Cap and Iron Fist, as formidable as they are, going to be able to defeat these four powerhouses um, in the Wrecking Crew? And by official handbook of the Marvel Universe standards, I believe each one of these guys can lift press 10 tons and is bulletproof and uh, has everything else going along with those uh, resiliencies. But we'll see. It's very clever. They're going to use the uh, Avengers training room or danger room against them. We're gonna walk out of it too, hero, over your dead bodies, Thunderball says. No, you're not, Thunderball. That slab, it came out of nowhere, uh. And there's a lot more where that came from, friend, Cap says. Oh yeah? Well, let's see how hard uh, actually, I can't really read this one because it's actually the dialogue is a little messed up in this word balloon. Um, he essentially, he's going to put a half ton of floor into Cap's face, but instead, a geyser of water comes up, sploosh, and, and nails the wrecker. And uh, Bulldozer, unhappy. Cripes, the boss must have hit some sort of what's water pipe. I got news for you, chumps. It's going to take a, more than a piece of that. So stop bulldozer. Anything you say, pal. Kabam. So he gets hit with some kind of weight press, some kind of massive weight press. All of you, watch it. The room's gimmicked. Somehow, we're fighting machines as well as men. But we can destroy one just as easily as the other. Not quite, Thunderball. The specially designed danger room is running on its Thor sequence and machinery made to push the strongest god of all to limits of his power can total you four, Iron Fist says as he adroitly avoids one of the hazards himself. There's only one drawback to Cap's plan while the room can hurt the wrecking crew. Shut your mouth, punk. Pile driver, look out. Ugh. It can kill me and Cap if they don't first. Great shot here uh, in this cool panel. And the panel arrangement on this page, uh, funky, unconventional, but great at telling the story of the action that's transpiring in this script here. As Iron Fist ducks out of the way and Piledriver's massive fist actually hits the wrecker by accident, stunning him. This room is spooked. I'm getting out of here. Once we're outside, we can stomp these heroes, no sweat. True enough, pile driver. All you have to do is get there. And getting out outside will be a cinch once I cut loose my pile driving punches. Hey, something's grabbed me. Let go. Yeah! No dice, friend. You're staying here until you're beaten. If we're going down, Cap, we're going to make sure to take you and the Kung Fu Punk with us. Wrecker. 
Better watch out for his bar. The files say it packs the cloud of Thor's mystic hammer. So I'll have to see that the wrecker doesn't get a chance to use it. Great shot of Cap with this massive uppercut here, knocking the wrecker down. Shades of how he no eventually knocked out Mr. Hyde. A similarly powerful foe. Perfect. My punch threw Wrecker just where I wanted him. What the? Oh, no, no. You lousy stinking. This ain't fair. All we have to do now is sit back and let the room do the rest. So Wrecker is bounced unceremoniously all around the room. He lands at the feet of Iron Fist. And once again, he has summoned um, his powers, making his fist like unto a thing of iron. And he KOs the Wrecker. Finally, Misty Knight uses her bionic arm to force her way into the room and finds, Hi, Misty. It didn't take as long as we thought. So I see. Enjoy yourselves, hot shots. It wasn't a bad workout, Ms. Knight. Now, if you'll be so kind as to call the police. I untie the butler. He's doing it. And so here we have the wrecking crew going away to the pokey. Watch him close, Murphy. Bet on it, Misty. I guess that's that. Not quite. I owe you an apology, Iron Fist, for jumping to conclusions before all the facts were in. I guess none of us are as infallible as we'd like to think we are. It was nice of Cap to let us slip out the side entrance, avoid all those reporters. No way could I have handled them on an empty stomach. My sentiments exactly, Iron Fist says to Misty. Oh yeah? So how's about the two of us trucking down to Sandolino's in the village for some dinner, my treat? It's the least I can do. And after that, who knows, Daniel Rand, this may be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. You know, Misty, could be at that. Next issue, back again, Boomerang. So we go from the Wrecking Crew in issue 12 to a fight with Boomerang in issue 13. And that one's actually pretty good too. But yeah, phenomenal issue, early burn. This is toward the end of Iron Fist as a series. It would end with issue 15. Of course, issue 14 has the immortal first appearance of Sabretooth. And then 15 has a guest appearance by members of the X-Men, which is sort of John Byrne's audition for the X-Men title. He was going to take over from Dave Cockrum as Cockrum was kind of falling behind on his uh, deadlines. He was sort of not as fast a penciler as Byrne was. So they sort of got him off X-Men and they wanted Byrne on there after his successful run on Iron Fist. But yeah, this contained just a phenomenal um, bit of fight choreography from our artists, John Byrne and Dan Atkins. The fight with Cap is um, one of the coolest in the Iron Fist series, and, and there are a ton of cool fights in this series, as the whole thing is about martial arts action, obviously, as the main protagonist is, of course, Iron Fist from Kan Lun, the magical, uh, mystical city of uh, martial arts. Great work. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. Tell your friend. Uh, tell your friends. Let me know in the comments uh, what your favorite issue of Iron Fist was. There were fifteen of these, and then some in um, the the Marvel Premiere series before this. But yeah, I'd love to hear it, and I'll bring you more soon on Scott Reed's Comics. Thanks for watching.